Petit Saint Vincent is in itself a hope spot within the greater hope spot. That here there's energy. People are focused on trying to restore Carl, individual species that once was a dominant species here. When I first came to the Caribbean in the 1950s, it was a different world. People ask me sometimes, where's your favorite place to dive? And I say, almost anywhere 50 years ago. Well, the foundation's about four years old, and it focuses exclusively on promoting marine exploration and protection. Uh, we do this globally with organizations like Mission Blue and National Geographic who are looking at the very big picture, but we also do quite specific, tangible things here in the Caribbean around this island of Petit St. Vincent. Uh, we are we're working with the government and local communities to build support for a no-take marine protected area, which will keep uh, the kind of destructive fishing away from the coral reefs we're trying to repair. We recently uh, uh, supported a project from a UK-based group that is replanting fast-growing elkhorn coral on the eastern Atlantic facing side of our island. And these are all uh, not only theoretical things that sound good, but you can get out there if you're one of our guests or one of our partners, and you can actually see and feel and touch what we're doing. And being able to come to this place that certainly does inspire hope, what an individual, Phil Stevenson, has been able to accomplish with his island, with the having guests come here, and with his foundation that supports research, exploration, and communication, but involving the local people who each become ambassadors. Once, once you know, you start to care in ways that you can't if you don't know what the issues are and also what you can do about it. So the aim of the coral restoration program is to bring back the Elkhorn coral, which had been the dominant coral species throughout the Caribbean in the shallow reefs. But in the 1980s, there was this devastating epidemic called white band disease, which killed about 98% of all Elkhorn and left large areas of the reef pretty much barren with fragments of dead coral and no shelter for fish or lobsters. So today there's a regional effort to bring back Elkhorn by finding the survivors, the resilient genotypes, and propagating these in underwater nurseries. And when they're big enough, we take cuttings from them and we plant them back on the reef to restore the reef ecosystem. People who are taking care of the coral garden, uh, that's, a, that's a very interesting uh, uh, group of people. We haven't brought in outsiders and paid them to do it. We've asked for volunteers from our local staff. And we've got about 130 people who work here on the island. And about a dozen have, have, have volunteered. Uh, to take scuba diving training, become scuba diving certified, and they're actually out there, uh, each of them, once a week or so, maintaining the coral, uh, cleaning it. Uh, eventually they'll be out planting it, taking it from the little nursery trays, and actually cementing it onto the barrier reef where the Elkhorn coral used to grow. The corals take a good couple of years to grow big enough to uh, survive on their own. Yeah, to survive and clean themselves, themselves, but still they're going to need a little assistance, like to take off the fireworms or the snails that kill them. Maybe a bad weather might pass and algae might take over them, so they'll still need a little nurture as we plant them out. But we'll see how that goes in the future. I saw that you were um, growing coral there, and it was pretty cool. And I saw that there was some fire coral there, and I think that fire coral is actually pretty beautiful, but you should never touch it because it will sting you very badly. The coral is for coral transplants to restore the coral reef. Uh-huh. And why are we doing that? Um, to help conserve the ocean. Okay. And did you see anything else around the table? Um. Other coral and uh, some seaweed. I saw a little bit of seaweed mm -hmm. and fish. We're cleaning the coral because of algae. Algae and parasites can get into the coral, make them sick, and eat the coral and kill the coral. So that's why we have to clean them every once in a while 
like maybe every week or every month. So, yeah. For me, why I wanted to do this? Because I want to give back something to the sea, to the ocean. Because I know human is what destroys the ocean. When I was a little boy and you go to the sea, you go to the rocks, you see tons of fish, beautiful corals that I never knew about. I only used to look at the, the ocean as where you can go and get fish on bed, nothing else. I never know about corals or the importance. So I come to, when I, I came to PSV and Owen met Owen mm -hmm. and they, they talk they talk about the project they want to do and the importance and why. And I get curious. I say I wanna learn this. Plus they, they said um they talk about getting certified scuba certified and that's something I was interested in. And the opportunity comes and I grab it. So I'm very happy, I'm excited. Every time I go to the corals I always Bro My main thing was to try diving but now I own more than diving because I'm no a coral <laughs> <We're> certified <laughs> diver and <laughs> I'm now part of a coral restoration Project. conservation team, right? So for me, it is a great experience, and I think that it's something that will last for how long? Forever, <laughs> forever. <laughs> something that will be carried on, as even though we leave, I mean, there will be persons to replace because there's always a dive shop, and persons will always get interested. more interested. And hopefully we plan to get a bigger team within the next few years. So never know but probably might have a future. <laughs> One of us might be a future marine biologist or uh, some of some sort. You never future. know what life takes you, right? So through a combination of protecting the fish that protect the reef, replanting corals on the reefs. Um, and doing things sort of responsibly, both on land and at sea, we hope that over time uh, these reefs will regenerate. We know it works because we've seen it work about 10 miles north of here in the Tobago Keys National Marine Park, which is actually in better shape today than it was two decades ago due to the regime of protection it had. So if we can do about the same here that they did in the Tobago Keys, I think it's gonna be a great benefit for the people who live here all the time and certainly a draw to bring people in as tourists. One of the things that I really admire about Phil Stevenson and what he's doing here on this island, bringing guests from all over the world who just by being here and being witnesses to the change that's taking place, the investment that Phil is making, the Jean-Michel Cousteau Dive Center to enlist the best in the world to come and guide the process to get people to learn how to dive, to learn how to snorkel, to go see the ocean. Don't just sit around enjoying this wonderful atmosphere, you can do that, but to be encouraged to take the plunge, to see the blue Petit St. Vincent, to see the blue part of the Caribbean from the inside out, to see fish swimming in something other than lemon slices and butter, <laughs> to see them on their own terms, to get to see that they have faces, in the uh, diversity here is incredible. Just uh, the area around and then the whole island itself has got incredible, you know, things. That, that, there's so much, so much to explore. I didn't know at first, but that restoration of the reef, mm -hmm. um, that, that the resort is supporting the, you know, rebuilding all the damage that's happened, you know, in, around the world to reefs and the conservation efforts here. But um, yeah, it was amazing. Just seeing the, the fish coming in cleaning the tops of the, the, the little beds of coral that are all laid out and how they're all being pieced together to, to then reconnect all the reef system. Yeah, it's inspiring, it's great. I think it's a critical thing, uh, especially in the, the tourism world where people, people want to be involved in what's happening. They want to feel as though they're part of it. And, and I think the hospitality world often keeps them at bay. They often feel that, you know, they're just here to escape. Sure, we're here to escape, but if you can feel like you can contribute as well, especially to such a rich community and such a rich culture as in this area, then it uh, makes, makes the trip a lot more worthwhile. And it allows, it allows richer stories. 
Our drive is to push it towards sustainable fishing by local communities. It's a tradition down here of people to fish and we don't want to, nor would we presume to try to eliminate these people's tradition. But there are ways to do it, there are techniques to do it, times to do it, and places to do it that result in more protection uh, for the marine life here. And what is coral? Do you know what coral is? Yeah, coral. It's an animal. It's an animal. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's not a rock or a plant? No. No. It's a living organism that looks hard, but is actually very fragile. And this, do you think that taking too much fish out of the sea is a problem, maybe? Yes, yeah. because it, it's symbiotic. Because the fish help the coral to survive. Because the coral give the fish homes, and the fish, well, they eat all the algae and stuff off the coral so the coral doesn't get sick and die. I had a bucket list of scuba diving, so when I got the opportunity, I took it. But the first time I went under the water, it changed my perspective of what was going to be there and what I wanted to do. It caught me by the balls, although I don't have balls. <laughs> so I was really 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 into it and as i did it and i planned could planted corals and know what corals are all about it just got me there and it's something that i would like to i will continue doing even if i'm not still on psv maybe i'll find somewhere else who will do something like this and give my skills that i've learned because i've got a lot of skills now i'm certified <laughs> i'm a little marine farmer, a little coral farmer. Parent. Yeah, <laughs> as you said, yes, I'm a parent. So scuba diving and being a part of the restoration program has really changed me in way, the way I saw the, the sea and in the way of, I think of fishes and sharks and corals and reefs. Now I'm interested in doing more not just for PSV or for me, but for the Caribbean. And when I speak to my colleagues about what we're doing, some of them are really interested, well, the ones that I speak to. And they're like, oh, I want to do this too, and I want to do it too. But I still think that some of them are kind of too minded about what the importance are of it. But me and along with the dive team we're trying our best to let them know exactly what we are doing and how important it is so what do you think this is gonna lead to what, what is this project gonna uh it's gonna lead to lots of uh very colorful coral and um more coral okay and with the coral comes what fish 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 That's right. <laughs> fish you should eat Lionfish. Why? Because too many lionfish is really bad. Lionfish kill other fish. They are venomous and they have spines on their bodies. Yeah, so you should um, eat a lot. Of, you should maybe eat a lot of the fish. The lionfish. The lionfish? Yeah, because they can kill a lot of fish that don't harm anybody. So the only fish you actually should fish for is lionfish. Not too much lionfish. No, you should fish for lionfish. But not too much lionfish. We must have to cut some fire on fish in the Caribbean. Over each and every island they do know. They have to keep a coral reef healthy and make a bit sandy. Pass on parrotfish, choose an alternative.